This video is going to walk through a couple of time value of money problems using the five key approach to get you comfortable with your financial calculator. First problem, you deposit $7,000 into the bank today, assuming you earn a 6.5% rate of return or interest rate on your deposit. How much are you going to have after 15 years, assuming annual compounding? So let's start with our financial calculator. We're going to be using the five key approach here. Our first key is the N. We have 15 years. So 15, plug that into the N value. Next we want our interest rate. We're going to earn a 6.5% rate of return. So 6.5 is our interest. Next up is our present value. That's how much we're starting with today. We have $7,000, which we're going to deposit today. So $7,000 is our present value. Next key is payment. We don't have an annuity in this one, so we want to zero out the payment to tell the calculator we're not using that. So zero, PMT, and now we solve for the future value. You can see that we're going to have $18,002.89 in the bank after our 15 years is up. Ignore that negative sign for right now. I'll talk about that in a little bit. In our next problem, we're saving for retirement and want to save $4,000 per year at the end of each year for the next 25 years. We're going to earn an 8% rate of return on our investments. How much are we going to have at the end of the 25 years? So let's go ahead and start over. Now the first thing we notice here is 4000 per year. The per year tells us that we're dealing with an annuity. We have an equal periodic cash flow over the entire time period. So 4,000 is our PMT. Notice that I didn't start with N this time. It doesn't matter which order you put these in, just put in your four values and then solve for the fifth one. Our annuity lasts 25 years, so that's our N, 25N. We have an 8% rate of return, so 8 is our interest per year. We don't have a set amount that we're starting with today so we're going to zero out our present value. So zero PV and now we've plugged in our N, our interest rate, our present value, our payment. We're ready to solve for future value. How much are we going to have after 25 years? We'll have 292000 $423.76 after the 25 years is up. In our last problem, we're offered $17,400 in eight years in exchange for $9,500 today. So in essence here, we are lending $9,500 today. We're going to wait eight years, and then we're going to receive a single cash flow of $17,400 back. We want to figure out what interest rate we're going to earn on this loan. Now remember in the first problem, I said we would come back to that negative sign. Here's where the negative sign starts to play an important part. The way the calculator thinks is it's always trying to balance out present value and future value. If we tell the calculator 9500 and 17400 and make them both positive, the calculator is going to try to figure out an interest rate that allows us to get 9500 today and get 17400 in the future. There's no interest rate that will make that work. Instead, what we're doing is giving up $9,500 today to get back $17,400 in the future. So when we set this up, 
We start with our 9500 and now we need to make it negative. So use the plus minus key. Be careful, don't use the subtract key. It has to be the plus minus key. Change that to negative. That's our present value. 17,400 is what we're going to receive back. So that is our future value. We're going to receive that so it's positive future value. We have no annuity here so we can zero out the payment. Timeline is going to be eight years so eight is our N. Now we've plugged in a value for N, PV, PMT, FV. The only one we don't have is the interest. Solve for that and we find out that we're getting 7.86 percent rate of return on this loan are 7.86 percent interest rate. Again, be careful. You have to give up 9,500 today to get 17,400 in the future. So this has to be negative, this positive. If you put those both in as positive, the calculator will tell you no solution or error because it can't find a solution that allows you to receive both of those cash flows you have to give one up to get the other. These are a few five key approach problems. The next video will look at a couple of cash flow worksheet problems and an effective annual interest rate problem.